I'm Michael Siz, founder and CEO of Moto Siz, and my dream is to build the world's fastest motorcycle. It's a family obsession, for sure. We have wonderful photos of my great-grandparents from both my grandfather's and my grandmother's side. So in the early 1900s, they were riding. If you love motorcycles and you love engineering and designing motorcycles, um, you really need to look at the sustainable aspect to them. Somebody's gotta take those first steps. And somebody's gotta take those first arrows. Riding a motorcycle at speeds up to or in excess of 200 miles an hour. On an electric bike, it's a completely different experience than on an internal combustion engine. On the electric bike, it's extremely calm. It's much more zen-like, um, and basically all you hear is air, which is surprisingly loud at 200 miles an hour. Basically every year we need to create a new motorcycle that's better and faster than the previous year. We're not here simply to make motorcycles that aren't aesthetic as well. That is part of the engineering and problem-solving DNA to us, and it starts with sketches. Michael comes to us with these beautiful sketches of his visions of how it should work and look, the colors, the shapes, and we've got to take that and add in all of the aerodynamics and mechanical forces that we then have to deal with on a bike. The path of being a trailblazer, I would say, is more difficult regardless of the product. If it's a product that's replacing something of legacy, it's even more difficult. It's not like we can call the company that's been making pistons for 100 years and they can help us with the formulation of raw material and the methodology and the heat treating and you know all the small refinements that they've done over the last 50 years and ask them, how can we apply that to, to batteries? It doesn't apply. At that point, there's a heavy burden on the software, SolidWorks in our case. It's still important to have some craftsmanship, some handwork that's part of the process. To me, that's the real art. That's really what we're striving to do, is to, is to keep the hand part engaged, but make it transparent to the overall CAD process. There's hundreds and hundreds of parts, and there's thousands of opportunities of failure, and one failure is unacceptable. We have a bit of an audacity. We dream big, think big, and want to take the big step. You need the tools of, of the uh, powerful modeling programs like SolidWorks to do that. Michael came to us and he said, listen, we're overweight on the bike. If we're going to win the Isle of Man, we need to get the weight out. And we started looking at the big chunks. One of the biggest areas on the bike is the swing arm. We began using the finite element software to really optimize that. Applied loads and constraints to the model. All those dark areas, that's where we needed to remove the meat. So we went in, we started carving away, we got 12 pounds out of it and increased the performance of the bike. Michael approached me and he said, you know, I've been thinking about the suspension on the bike and I want to do something novel. I'd like to look into taking the springs and dampers and moving them up to where the tank would be on a normal motorcycle because we don't have gas, so what are we going to put there, right? So we talked about putting the suspension up there. The SolidWorks software really helped us to approach it very quickly. Um, we started with just basic sketches, figuring out can we get the geometry to work? Can we get the forces to work? Our bike development time was four months. There's no way we could have done it without the tools that SolidWorks brought to the table. There's just no way. SolidWorks has allowed us to basically go down this clean sheet path um, and come out on the other side of it with a bike that, that literally goes together first try, which is amazing. The last two years, um, we had virtually no testing, and the bikes um, never saw the, the light of day until they were taken out of the crates on the Isle of Man. I think it's a testament to basically the ability of our team um, in using the tools that we have like SolidWorks, that we can actually have that much faith in parts that have never been tested, hand it to a rider, and say, go ahead and, and take on the most challenging and dangerous course in the world. Last year we won the uh, Isle of Man for the second time, and before Moto Cis won the Isle of Man, the last American bike to win at the Isle of Man was an Indian in 1911. To stand there and see your bike come up the road that some of the greatest you know, racers in history have come up and cross that, that finish line, to recognize it as your bike and your rider, it's, it's overwhelming. It's not to the same degree of having a birth, <laughs> but it's really close. <laughs>